This is my iPhone 8 and Apple Watch 3. Now, I didn't plan on buying these, to be honest with you. I was going to skip them because when I was looking at all the specs online, I came to realize, just like many others, that the iPhone 8 is just a slightly upgraded iPhone 7. Uh, now, the iPhone 7 was just a slightly upgraded iPhone 6, and this is nothing new for Apple. Apple does that. They have a lot of versions that are very similar. It's like going and buying a car. Uh, you could buy a 2011, or you might be able to buy a 2015. The car looks exactly the same. There's just maybe little changes that uh, you aren't really even going to notice. They may put in a slightly different radio or something like that, or they may add interior lighting a little bit differently. Uh, some, something may be changed, but the car itself is pretty much the same. Apple does the same exact thing with their iPhones, and I continuously am a sucker for them. I bought the first iPhone. I bought the very first iPhone when it launched. I was super excited about it. I had already been an Apple user for a little while, and uh, actually for about six years, and was super excited to... Um, you know, to have a phone that was built by a computer company uh, that wasn't something that HP had put together that was just kind of a disaster. But anyways, um, here we are 10 years later, and although I wanted to skip the iPhone 8 so badly, I wanted a 10th year device. It's 10 years, it's the 10 year anniversary of the iPhone, and I wanted a device so bad from Apple that was gonna be amazing. Now, they're hoping that that will be the iPhone 10. Everybody looks at the iPhone 10 as something that is a bit different in design and style compared to the previous versions of the iPhone, which begs the answer, begs the question, I guess you could say, why have an iPhone 8? Well, I have speculation there. I believe that the iPhone 10 will sell more iPhone 8s. You know, there are people who uh, don't necessarily want the Face ID unlock. That's a brand new thing. It's a little scary to some people. So they go with the iPhone 8 because maybe they had an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 6 and it's time to upgrade. But for people like me who want something new and exciting every year, we haven't gotten that from Apple in a long time. For a little while, Apple did give us that with new features coming all the time, but I just can't get excited about it anymore. On launch day for the iPhone 8, on the day that you can actually pick it up in stores, I reluctantly went and purchased one, thinking, you know what, I think that iOS 11, you know, maybe it'll be fresh and it'll just, you know, the iPhone, I've been on Android for basically almost a whole year, or the majority of 2017 anyways, uh, with a little bit of Apple sprinkled in here and there, but I've been on Android predominantly for quite a while. Maybe it's time for me to start using Apple again. My wife has an iPhone and, you know, it's really nice to be able to iMessage, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I'm on a PC now, so iMessage doesn't work on the PC, but nonetheless, I, I kept telling myself there's got to be a reason why, uh, you know, it's got, I've got to get one. I've got to try it. Well, you know, I made the iPhone 8 my primary phone uh, the day that I got, I mean, the moment that I got back with the phone. And by the end of the day, I was back on my Samsung phone. I just, I couldn't handle it. You know, it doesn't matter what they do to the outside of the phone, to be honest with you iOS is still the same. Nothing really changes with iOS. They move some things around and they may make some things a little bit different, but iOS just hasn't changed in so long. I made the comment that that Apple has changed the, uh, the experience a little bit, but the UI itself is essentially the same UI that the first iPhone came out with. Sure, the icons look better, the fonts look better, the screen is more crisp. There are things that are there that are better. There are, techn there are technology advances that have taken place. Um, there are refinements to iOS that have happened, but there really isn't a whole lot that's different since the very first iPhone came out. There's still 
a big old grid of apps on your home screen when it sure would be great if we can move those somewhere else into an app drawer like on Android so that I can see my beautiful background. Being able to shoot, you know, rotate the phone and have the icons kind of squiggle back and forth a little bit so that I could see more of my background. That's not a feature. That's a hindrance. And I like to turn it off because if I stare at that for too long, it's going to make me dizzy. I just, I just can't right now with Apple. And it's a real bummer because I just hold a candle for Apple. I always will. I always have. I've been an Apple. I, my very first computer was an Apple II. Uh, then I had an Apple II GS. And then when I got into high school, I got a PC and was on a PC for a couple of years. And then I was on, I was back on a Mac. I had a PowerBook G4. And then that started out several years of Mac Pros and MacBook Pros and all this stuff, all the way up until just the last couple of years when I've really started to question why is Apple doing what they're doing with their products. Now, I recognize that Apple is not anymore a technology company. They are a lifestyle brand. A technology company is cur is always pushing forward, is always trying new things, is always developing new ways of doing things. Apple isn't doing that anymore. They are taking what other people are developing. They are maybe fine tuning it, maybe doing exactly the same thing uh, because of they are a lifestyle brand. They are making it popular like wireless charging. Wireless charging on the iPhone 8 is basically old technology. I've been wirelessly charging phones for years on the Android platform. So with this phone, though it is good, a good looking device, you know, they added glass on the back, obviously, so that the wireless charging could take place. Um, but you know, the, the, the glass on the phone definitely is super smudgy. You're going to end up having to put a case on it anyways, um, which is fine, but that's, that's just why Apple phones are designed the way they are. I believe that Apple designs these phones the way that they are so that they can sell more cases. Uh, obviously a good portion of their store is dedicated to cases and accessories. So why would they develop a phone that was super easy and nice to use without it? I mean, we've got a camera bump and it's 2017. We're 10 years into phones. They didn't start out with camera bumps necessarily and they developed camera bumps over the years so that when they sit on tables, they don't sit flat. You put a case on them, solves that problem. And glass, super smudgy, you know, glass is problematic. Uh, I'm sure something could have been developed along the way so that wireless charging can take place without having to have a totally glass phone. It is a nice sleek looking phone though. I'm gonna give it to them there. And the scores came out and even though they haven't tested the Galaxy Note 8, the camera is top notch and Apple has always done a great job with the camera. I don't care who they source it from or where the camera comes from, but nonetheless, the camera has always been top notch on the iPhone and that is one of the things that really kind of drew me into to desiring an iPhone again. Now, the whole two camera, dual camera thing, I feel like Apple has done much better this time around with it. Whereas last year's dual cameras, it seemed like when you punched in at that 2X camera, you got a poor quality image. Now it seems Apple has fixed that in the cameras to where whether you're using the wide or the telephoto lens, you're getting a decent looking camera and a decent looking image, I mean. So nonetheless, there's nothing inherently wrong with this phone other than the fact that it's the same phone we've got for the last several years. And yes, all the attention is on the iPhone 10. It is a, a new design, a bezel-less, almost bezel-less phone, you know, just a really uh, uh, departure from recent styles. Not so much of a departure in the, in the fact that it looks a lot like other phones that are modern that are going with the taller screens, less bezels and all that stuff. Um, but Apple is trying something new, at least with Face ID and getting rid of buttons altogether on the phone, which is something new. Obviously, Samsung has Face ID unlock. You can kind of do that. It's not that great, but you can unlock your phone with your face. They still have a button on the back, though. Uh, so you know, they're not probably as advanced in that area as Apple is with the, uh, the iPhone 10. So I can't necessarily speak for the iPhone 10 yet as to whether or not the iPhone 10 will give me that sad feeling deep down in my soul that the iPhone 8 has given me. 
I believe that there will be a little bit of newness and freshness with the iPhone 10 just because of the style, the design of the phone. But once that is, once you start seeing through that, the UI, the UX, all of that stuff, the experience on the phone is still iOS 11. And iOS 11 is the same without, if you take into account that they changed the font, um, it's essentially the same as iOS 10 and iOS 9 and iOS 8 iOS 7 changed the UI a little bit. They went with that flat style. It kind of, you know, everybody was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so different. And really it wasn't, but iOS hasn't really changed a bit. They've added features that have been great. Yes, a lot of those features have been borrowed from other platforms and a few of them they've developed themselves that other people have borrowed from them. But nonetheless, nothing has really changed in a long time. And that is where I am saddened because I feel Apple used to be a company that was developing technology, that was a technology company and not so much a lifestyle company. And then, you know, the iPod, of course, and the, uh, the iPhone, those are the devices that kind of switch them uh, into this new method, this new way of thinking where now instead of thinking different and being a company that is developing stuff that people have never seen before that's making their lives easier. They're essentially developing stuff that are for a specific lifestyle. Um, they're not for power users anymore. They're not for people that are actively working, trying to be creatives, trying to ed edit video, trying to do lots of cool things. Um, you know, yes, the devices still do that, but they're not for the technologist, for the uh, for the early adopter. It's no longer for that person. And uh, that person is a smaller chunk of the crowd. I totally get that. So with the iPhone 8, I will be packaging it up and taking it back. I just can't use it anymore. It's not exciting to me. As for the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch has been exactly the same for its ex entire existence, with the exception of the LTE model being a little bit thicker to account for needing a, uh, a little bit more technology inside of it. Now, of course it does have LTE inside of it, which means that you can leave your phone behind, still get phone calls, still get text messages. This is something that you've been able to do on Android for a couple of years, but it hasn't been that great of a process or an experience on Android. You know, I've got a Samsung watch right here that has an LTE chip in it, but the only thing that's nice is answering phone calls on it. Anything else is kind of a pain in the butt. And I've had the LG Watch Urbane 2 LTE version, which is a horrible long name, but nonetheless, that one was a problem as well. Other issues that the Samsung watch and every other watch that has an LTE chip on AT&T's network has is problems shifting back and forth between the device. When I leave my phone behind and the watch takes over, when I come back to my phone, sometimes it has a hard time switching back to my phone uh, from the watch, and that's kind of a pain in the butt. I am not 100% sure, but the experience very much feels in this Apple Watch in a similar way as to being able to answer and respond to text messages and phone calls on your iPad if you have an iPad that has an LTE chip in it. I've had in the past an iPad with an LTE chip and my iPad would ring when I get a phone call. I can answer calls on it. I can uh, dial out calls on it and all that stuff. I mean, it was really kind of cool because I didn't have to pick up my phone or maybe you know my phone was charging or something like that. The watch works just like that, which leads me to believe that the watch basically uses a data network and that's it. It has an LTE chip in it. It uses a phone number when it's connected to your uh, your account, especially on AT&T in my experiences. But the phone calls and the text messages seem to do much better on the watch than on, or on an Apple watch than on Samsung. So software wise and using the networks for what they are, I feel like Apple has really always done well there. As far as the technology that this watch has, it's not that exciting. We definitely have had this type of technology for years on uh, in Android, and it's finally coming to Apple. Now, I'll give them this. 
Sometimes waiting a little while and seeing how technology works for other people is a smart move, and Apple obviously has been doing that. Instead of being the industry leader and coming out with the newest technology, they set themselves apart by taking the technologies that have been being used for a few years and refining them and making them a better experience. That's why the Apple Watch is a better experience than a lot of other smart watches, and why Face ID on iPhone 10 is probably going to be a way better experience than any other sort of face unlock method using infrared that Windows have, that, that Android has. It's probably going to be a much better experience. I will give that to Apple. But nonetheless, for me, I don't necessarily care about those little bells and whistles. I want new technology. I want the best that's out there. And right now, in my opinion, Apple is not the best that's out there. My Samsung Galaxy Note 8 is the leading technology that's out there right now in smartphones. I mean, there are some phones with maybe slightly better specs than that, but the Note 8 is a fantastic phone. Most of the photos that I've been showing you of my, this uh, technology, I took several of those with the Note 8. Fantastic camera. The Note 8 is just a really good phone. I feel like Apple is takes a back seat to innovation these days, and it's just a real bummer because it hits me in the soul where I have a love for Apple, and I always will, but for right now, I just can't and that's why this is going back. What's your thoughts on the current state of Apple and their latest devices that just came out? Are you content with them? Are you happy with the advancements that they're making? Or do, are you like me and you just, it, it leaves a hole in your soul where you wish Apple, the uh, old Apple coming out with great technology uh, all the time, you know, maybe that's where you wish and hope and dream Apple was. So let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and click on that subscribe button if you want to see more from us here on State of Tech. Thanks so much.